والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين praise be to allah the lord treasurer and sustainer of the world the most gracious the most merciful the master of the day of judgment all praise is due to allah and his peace and blessing be upon his last messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his pure family his loyal companions and all those who follow the miraculous and good deeds until the day of judgment amen dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are many beliefs and emotions that are intertwined one of the highlights is that you should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be comprehensive so you do not take only one glimpse and ignore the other one of such feelings is the feeling of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hope and good expectation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hope for the mercy and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all such feelings and at the same time the feel of reverence and fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and exaltation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on so you need both of them at the same time to have perfect faith and good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one such thing that we need to highlight is called khashya khashya is something very specific in Arabic we need to explain the concept briefly just to get the idea of uh, behind it we have what is called khawf or fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fear is usually by someone who has done something wrong a sinner, a wrongdoer so he is afraid, he is fearful from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is fear khashya is also fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his punishment but not because you have done something wrong rather out of reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and exaltation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his grandeur and because of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all such feelings of and, and such attributes of majesty so it is a reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than merely fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is something that is very important this is the thing that will lead to what is called taqwa this is the, actually the essence of taqwa and this is what will lead to ihsan perfection in faith and in religion how so? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted this concept in so many places in the Holy Quran. And in all of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned some criteria, or one criteria. Some places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is linked it with taqwa directly. Some places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving it the attribute that those who have khashya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret, when you are alone, when nobody is observing you so the concept is that in our life usually we are not worried of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is thinking about what we are doing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is regarding whatever I am doing will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with this action or this speech or this thought or not most of the time we neglect that we are worried what will my boss say about this? What will the policeman say about that? And will my friend or my neighbor or whosoever be upset with me or not? And so on. How will people regard me? And this is an imbalance. Or rather, this is a misunderstanding of your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The concept of having this reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be at the foremost at any given time. As one of the righteous people says, that whenever you do anything, you should remember how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at you in it. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you. Will he be pleased with it or not? Whenever you say anything, you have to keep in your mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening to that. So will he be pleased with that or not? And whenever you are silent, then you have to remember or keep in your mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything about you, even what's inside your heart. That concept is the critical point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who have khashya for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret. Khashya in front of people might not be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
But when you are alone, you are at your desk, you could do whatever you like. You could cheat, you could uh, ignore work, you could do a bad thing and so on and nobody will notice. Your boss does not know, your uh, colleague does not know, nobody knows, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Will you still do it or will you abstain for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's a critical part. You can skip the attendance mark or sheet or, or, uh, or fingerprint or whatsoever, but you are still punctual for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or for fear of people. This concept is in all your action, all your behaviors. Is it in reverence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in reverence of the system or the punishment or the boss? See the concept? So the idea of those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with reverence in secret, something that we should keep in our mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us this criteria of those people and he promised them great rewards. In most of the places in the Holy Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the reward of those who are muttaqun, those who are pious, those who are virtuous, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting with it one, one clause of being those who have reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have khashiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not mechanical. It's not like Allahu Akbar and bowing and, and then, and your heart, where is your heart? Is it in the salah or outside the salah? Are you doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You are putting in your mind that you are standing between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or your mind is somewhere else? Else what is the use? So the mechanicality is not a big deal. It doesn't mean that you ignore it, no. But the idea is you should worry much about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want, as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah Almighty does not look at your appearances, your clothes, your, your, your look, your style, all of this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not regard it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your heart. Where is your heart? Is it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or none? So at all your times, all your reaction, where is your heart? You could actually trick people in thinking, MashaAllah, he is a very pious person. You could trick people that, MashaAllah, you are concentrating in the salah, you have khushur. You could trick people that you have this reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the actual reverence is in the heart. Who knows about this? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about that. People don't know. So let's use this if people think that you are the greatest person in, on earth, the greatest worshiper, the best, the most pious person, and then if you are not so in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of this is useless. The Messenger وسلم, mentioned seven categories, seven groups of people who will be shielded in the hereafter by the shield of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be no other shield in the day of resurrection. The Messenger Muhammad وسلم, mentioned the groups of them. A just ruler, a person who grow up in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person whose heart is attached to the masjid, two people who loved each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever they meet, they meet for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they separate, they separate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who is a woman of beauty, a woman of beauty and position and power invited him to illegal relationship and he said, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't go. And a person who spends for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he hides his charity so that his right hand does not know what the left hand spent. And a person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret and his eyes flows with tears out of reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is common about all of them? All of them have this concept of reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No time to explain each one of them. But as you see, each one of them could have gone away with whatever he wants and nobody would have noticed. But he feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was absolutely nothing to fear from people. On the other hand, it was the exact opposite. But he do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the concept of this reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, this is the concept of khashya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the believers and he said that their reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is garden, is gardens under which rivers flow, they abide therein forever. Allah Almighty is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is for those who have khashya to their Lord. This is for those who have reverence to their Lord. It's crazy. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who have reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret, verily for them is forgiveness from their Lord and great rewards. And the verses in the Holy Quran are aimless about this concept. So that is what we need to put in our mind. Throughout your relationships, throughout your life, you need to have this concept of reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are not afraid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only because of the punishment. But at the same time, you have this reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unless you have that, then something is wrong. So the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only love and forgiveness all the way without having the other part as well, which is reverence and being afraid of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. Together, that is when you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and truly respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or else, if somebody claims that he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is, mashallah, not worried about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he does whatever he likes, then what? This lack of reverence is something that is very dangerous. So the concept of reverence or khashiya, how do you get it in your heart? The first and foremost, you need to have knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more knowledge you know, the more knowledge you have, the more reverence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have. And the knowledge here is both. The first, the knowledge about the hereafter, knowledge about the unseen, knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he mentioned in the Holy Quran, as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained. So when you know about the, the, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the, what will happen in the hereafter, about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. That is when you have reverence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. Second thing, knowledge in this world about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you know about the vastness and the largeness and the, 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 the delicacy and the balance of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the endless details about whatever we see and whatever we do not see in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this is just a tiny bit of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created all of that. So when you know more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have to have more reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said in the Holy Quran, verily, those who have reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are only the knowledgeable people, only the scholar, only the scientist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Holy Quran. And in that ayah, in that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not speaking about the knowledge about the hereafter. He was speaking about the knowledge of this world, the creation. When you know about all, the more details you know about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you know about the greatness and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ability and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. This creation is so delicate, so balanced, beyond imagination. There is a relationship between everything in this creation. Subhanallah, this is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if this is the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala, so how should you be towards him? You are a tiny bit in this creation. Invisible in this creation. Still, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a preference. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you this responsibility. So how are you going to hold it? We in our life, wallahi, in our life now, if somebody of a certain importance or certain position or a ruler or something invites a person and the person has reverence in his heart to him, people do have that. So what about the Creator Himself? You do not have any reverence to Him. You do not have any khashya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to instill this in our hearts. Ask ourselves all the time. Whatever you do, whatever you say, whatever you think, how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regard that? Because that is the important thing. It's not about what people will think about you. All of this is useless. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks about you. That is what is important. In this world and the hereafter. In the hereafter, because you will get the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this world, because it will make your relationship with everyone around you better. So you treat people in the right way, in a just way, because you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you reverence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if they were enemies, even if they were, again, non-believers, even if they do not share the same ideas, the same thought, all of it, you will still be just to them because Allah ordered you to. You will still be merciful to other creatures, people or humans or animals or anything. Why? Because you revere Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not do any injustice because you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be kind to everybody because you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. So it will change, it will transform your life. That is when you'll have this inner peace. Second thing and final thing is you need to teach these things to your children as well. It's important. Sadly, in our relationship now, in our teaching of children, usually we teach them to be afraid of people. 
Don't do that, your father will be upset with you. Don't do that, your mother will be upset with you. Don't you do that, the teacher will punish you. Don't do that, you will lose mark. Don't do that, do this for this sake. Do this to give that. Do this so that you will have a better job. You will have a better pay, a better salary, better. And then where is the hereafter? It's not there. So he grows up as what? Nothing. Totally materialistic. He has not been taught what is the most important thing. No, tell him, do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. Do this, Allah Almighty will, 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 will have mercy upon you. Have mercy upon other people and other or creatures so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy upon you. Have respect for others because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do that. Respect your parents, respect your uh, neighbor, respect the elders so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you because of that. Have mercy upon the children, have mercy upon the weak, help the poor and the needy and so on, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you and so on. You have to attach him with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not with people. You attach him to be afraid from you or from the teacher or from somebody who is in authority or the boss or whatsoever. And when that person is not there, he does the exact opposite. He does not worry, nothing to worry about. No. You attach him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is when his life will change. Doesn't make a difference to him. That is what will make him a good person for himself and everybody around us. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who have reverence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in apparent and in secret. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our knowledge about him. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who understand the religion correctly and practice it correctly. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to his divine truth. Make us good for ourselves, for our families, children, neighbors and society. And then for all of humanity. آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا